Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. <clears throat> it, it is he who made us and we are his we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Amen. <clears throat> Welcome and good morning to all with love with the Lord. My name is Wally Costa and I'll be your literatist today and Please, uh, shut off. this is the time to shut off your cell phones or put them on vibrate, please. And there are blue cards in the pews. If, you're, um, if your visitor and or if your address has changed or anything like that. <clears throat> and um, today our pastor will be Ed Lu Lupicino. <clears throat> Get that right? Close. Lubiano. <laughs> Leon. <Leono. clears throat> and <clears throat> in Dutch flat, Ruth Beckman will be... Uh, there and then in Placer Hills, Linda Deschel. Do we have any announcements? Okay, trustees and finance, a short but thorough meeting in the library. Tanya's home. Can't, can't imagine being happy to be home. No, she called, she called me too, and, and, and she sounded really perky. She sounded like her old Tanya self. Um, I've spent two days... Oh, Lisa, did you have a... No, go ahead. And she sounded really perky. She sounded like her old Tanya self. Um, I've spent two days... Oh, Lisa, did you have a... No, go ahead. Uh, we're continuing to accept any gifts that want... People want to give to Ellie, for Pastor Ellie, and uh, through the end of this month, we'll uh, send them a, a, a check in the amount instead of handing over cash, um, and then still have a card here for signature. And the other thing is, we were going to have a celebration with Ellie next Sunday on Father's Day, but we've canceled that, and hopefully at some time in the future, we'll be able to do that. And she can come back and see us. Perfect. Yes. I, I, David. Yes. His name is George Fenley, F E N L E Y, and he will be here with us the first Sunday. Very exciting. I think you're going to be glad to meet him. We'll be confused about the Georges, but that means we've got a Kate and a Kate and a George and a George and a Ruth and a Ruth. Um, <laughs> call out three names and you got half of us. I, I have spent... That's right. That, oh, two Eds today. I had... Boy, you know, it takes a minute. I've spent two days at conference. Um, the theme was from Romans 8, uh, Let Love Be. And, and, and I thought while I was there about this place because the message was let love be. And we do. Love is in this room. Love is in this room. So for our first hymn. No more announcement? Any more announcements? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Join me in the opening prayer. I mean, excuse me, the opening song. It's on page 89. This is the day that the Lord has made. We 
come rejoicing and giving thanks. This is the day that God invites us to love and to live. We shall see the bell and the fire. We turn our hearts toward God. This is a day to worship our Creator and rem remember, re Redeemer. Please be seated. <clears throat> Join me in the opening prayer. Almighty God, God we gather in this space, space to, to praise your, your name. Help, Help us to lay aside our words, worries, our, our fears, fears, our frustrations, and our anxieties, that, that we may free, free, tru truly worship you. Through the power of your Spirit, empower us to seek your ways, walk in the footsteps of Christ, come before us with our holy heart, and live as your faithful servants. We seek your help this day, O God, that the world may know your abundant love and your amazing grace. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Let us take a moment for personal confession. Sisters and brothers, hear these words of assurance. Our loving God has said, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. Choose life. Brothers and sisters, in the name of God, you are forgiven. Now choose life and turn your hearts toward God. Amen.
of the preparations, but uh, to God's grace and through the uh, support and assistance, help from our church, from our leaders who came yesterday and to the next few days, uh, our gratitude and <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. <laughs> yeah, Let us give thanks to the Lord. Okay, so his name again is Bob, yes, okay. So Bob, having seizures, uh, asked Kate for prayer, asked lots of people for prayer, and the seizures are gone. He's home and starting to get his life back together. Let us give thanks to the Lord for Bob's healing. Thanks be to God. Go, go ahead, Rosie, yes. No, I believe it was sprinkles of but not him. Okay, so so Kent is migrating uh, to the U.S. to the U.S. from Philippines, but uh, he had a motorcycle wreck. But the motorcycle was messed up, and he wasn't. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Lori. Okay, so two grandchildren, three and one and a half with COVID. You know they can't get their vaccinations yet. Um, Lord, in your mercy. Oh God, hear our prayers. Protect the children. Protect the children. Yes, Ed. Uh, we have a from being a captain to a major. Oh, major. Okay. <laughs> fourth, fourth, fourth month of pregnancy. So, okay. So, oldest daughter has yes. Big news in your family. Yes, uh, daughter. Dearest has um, been advanced. She's a chemist and is going to England to train people. And, uh, and son uh, is now a major, major Lubiano in, in, the, uh, in the Air Force. Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise be to God. Oh, yes, and let's not forget Tanya. She is home. Still, you know, she has to behave and recover. But for Tanya... Let us give thanks to the Lord. Praise, Praise be to God. Let's pray. God in heaven. God in heaven, we feel you here with us. And yet sometimes we, we feel distant. We, we hear bad things. And, and, it, and it shakes us. And yet you tell us you will be with us always. And that we shouldn't be shaken. Lord. Heal our, our shaking moments, our, our moments of doubt, our moments of hesitation, and make us whole. God, we ask that you be with each one that we've mentioned, uh, with, with recoveries that sometimes are slow, sometimes are slow, but step by step. We ask that you be with doctors, with therapists, with, with all who attend. And that each one that we have mentioned may get better, stronger, and more complete in their life and in their, their spirit and in their mind. God, we ask for peace in our world. We, we, we don't understand. We, we feel bad when we run over a squirrel and there are leaders in this world 
who run over entire towns and populations. Soften hearts, Lord. Soften the hearts of this man, Putin. Soften the heart of this man in North Korea. Let them know there is no need to fight in a world where there is enough if we only learn to share more, give more, and reach out more. So now we ask that each of us here be given the gift of extra sharing, extra giving an extra ability to reach out. God, descend upon this service now as we continue. Open our hearts and our minds to your words. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. That's a little piece of metal that's supposed to hold this up, and I guess it's kind of done. Sorry about that. I'll put it that way so that it can't fall down again. Oh, okay. Uh, will, will, the usher, will, the ushers please come, will the ushers please come forward? God of abundant life, we give you our thanks for your many gifts, most of all, thank you for the gift of life and for all the ways we are able to worship you and serve you. May these gifts bring abundant life to those both near and far. In your precious name, we pray, amen. Hymn of preparation. Hymn of preparation, page in your hymnals, page 368. seated. Today's scripture reading is from Mark 4, 26, 34. <clears throat> he also said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter a seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and, he, <clears throat> and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how the earth produces of itself the first stock, then the head, then the full grain, and then the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once it go, he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we comp compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use it for? It is like a mustard seed, which is when sown upon the ground, it is the smallest of all seeds on earth. Yet when it's sown, in, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth the largest branches so the birds of the air can make the nest in the shade. With many such parables, we spoke, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. 
He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. Okay. Okay, and now we'll hear from uh, Ed, who is reading Ellie's uh, sermon that she had prepared before before her her condition uh, so just to remind you those of you don't know Ed was the pastor here about 20 years ago so here we are full circle it's still young <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a, a sermon for hope and trust wherein Ellie was uh, preparing this a month ago because she wants to do all the uh, churches to hear her sermon because before we go to the Southern California and uh, I, just, I was teasing her at the time that I, I could preach that allow me to preach in your church and said no 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 <laughs> so here I am the hope in the trust Although we cannot expect an end to evil in the world, not even through the ministry of the church, we do our ministry of hope, right? Trusting that God will use it in redemption of creation represented by the harvest in the parable of the growing seed. Somehow, Ellie, when, when, when she's, uh, Pastor Ellie was uh, writing this sermon, he's always asking me what would be the introduction that's going on in our world. And she came up with this questions. Can we really hope that the world is becoming a better place? If we think the country is headed in the right direction, can we see a basis of Hope in the goodness of humanity? Do we face endless war, terrorism, horrific crimes, and all others? We must realize by now that no politician or a pastor, a minister, or a bishop can fulfill the promise to keep us safe. The evil in the human heart will not go away on its own. And for all our culture, education, scientific progress, findings, and all of that, we seem stuck when it comes to human nature. What does the future hold for us? It's a big question. And what's the point of all our work? When we look at the church, we might wonder what good our efforts do. We pray for peace, but the bullets sit on their targets. The bombs rip off limbs, the sweet children harden into gunmen. We donate cans of soup, buy turkeys for holidays with baskets, and volunteer at the food bank, but our stomach grow on no matter what we do. We teach love and forgiveness, but hate and vengeance mock our every word. I don't know what kind of thinking Pastor Ailey was <laughs> thinking at the time. And, and I, I said to her when I read this and heard this, said, oh, you are a PSR graduate. <laughs> We want to think that our hard work in the church will pay off, right? We pray, we hope that our efforts will do more than give our temporary warm glow or a grateful hug from a well-fed child. We hope that we really can make a lasting difference. We hope that the world will finally listen to us, throw down their weapons, and throw open their wallets. We hope our words about the love of Jesus will flow from our lips right to the ears of those who need to hear them. 
Those words will begin the transformation to a better world. Yet, it seems that no matter how eloquently we speak of love of Jesus, the scream of hatred draws, out, draws us out. What do we do? Do we throw up our hands and turn in despair? Do we keep going, hoping that in a just a little while, everything will change? Do we retreat into the church and give up onto the world? Two seemingly unremarkable parables into this, to this lesson. Before we give up, however, let's hear Jesus' words in this parable. Could we find a simpler parable from Jesus than the first one? We might even wonder if it should count as a parable. Where do we find in this one the things that usually attract us to Jesus' parables? We could poke this parable from every side and still not find any emotion. We find no angry workers demanding an honest wage for an honest day's work. We find no weeping, father running out to give a death grip hug to a son returning with questionable motives. We find no cry of anguish from the bridesmaid who forgot to stop for oil. We don't even find the disappointment of watching a plan sprout out only to see the thorns choke it off. We find only a farmer who tosses seed on the ground. He doesn't even seem to do it right. <laughs> Jesus makes no mention of plowing or preparing the soil, right? He just scattered the seeds on the ground. Pew, pew, out there. The seed simply grows into a plant. Exactly what we expect a seed to do. We see no drama, no threat to the growing plant. No thorns or birds or rocks get in the way. We expect a storyteller to weave a tale about how the storm threatened the crop, but it survived. And yet Jesus gives us only a parable about a man who plants seeds that grows into plants. That's about as exciting as watching grass grow. <laughs> oh, Ellie, he's a good preacher than I am. We don't get much more from the second parable, right? But at least we have a twist on this story. A tiny mustard seed grows into a tree that shelters the birds. Okay. And who are the birds in the church? We. We can see the contrast and finding inspiration. Great things can start small. We enjoy these kinds of stories and promising beginnings that flourish in the long run. Even this parable comes with a wink. No one would confuse a mustard seed with an oak tree, and Jesus' audience would know better, and they might have heard the maxim, and I quote, don't judge a tree by its height, unquote. <laughs> so we have two parables that might be flunk a storytelling contest. Seeds grows into crops, and a mustard seed produces a mustard tree. Of course. Yet, genuine hope. Despite the seemingly unremarkable nature of these parables, though we can find genuine hope, someone scattered seeds on the ground, someone who doesn't know much about farming, someone who doesn't do the kind of preparation we might expect, but over time, he watches it grow into crops. Someone acts a bit like 
the church. We scattered our ministry. We go to places. We broadcast. And all of these things that we send through emails, internet, and everything. We don't always know what we are doing. But we don't always put as much work into it as we might. And we don't know how God will use our ministries. And we cannot force anything to happen, but we find promise in the parable that despite the shortcomings of someone, maybe you and I, the seed still produce a crop. Even in the promise, we might find frustration, however. No one can eat, can eat the crop until it has fully grown. We know the potential of the crop, but we cannot eat it until it ripens. In the parable, the farmer sees the growth, recognizes the stages of development of the plant, but has to wait for the harvest. And if we, starve, if we are starving now, we still have to wait. We see in the fullness of the harvest and the promise of God's new creation. The church plants the seeds of grace from the ministry of Christ. Christ started something new. Jesus' death and resurrection became the seed that the church plants into the world. We cannot control the growth or speed of the harvest. Yet we can claim the faith that the harvest will come and God will bring in a time of peace, a time of wholeness, and a time of justice. We call that the kingdom, the reign of God. In the parable, the mustard seed paints the image of birds nesting in the branches. The image teaches us about security, about the nature, about community. We hear echoes in this parable of the prophet Ezekiel, who, who tells the Lord's riddle, political intrigue destroys a cedar, and later God takes a sprig of the cedar and plant it. The tree produces fruit and provides shade and shelter for every nature Everyone created by God. The mission of God's people is to become the means by which God provides security. God will continue to work through God's people for that security. And God's reigns will offer that security. Whether this parable drew directly in the strange prophet Ezekiel's, we see more common ideas. Our parable is even simpler than Ezekiel's. The farmer plants the seed, the crops grow. The parable lacks conflict and complication, and that assures us of, the, of God's promise of creation, and nothing can stop God's healing of creation. No conflict arises to threaten the crops, but the crop does take time we find that even more frustration than a threat. At least a threat would have a drama that we watch every day, right? And the farmer has to wait. We wait. When one of the hardest things to do is we would rather get our blood pumping for the fight that had to wait. Just as the farmer has to wait for the harvest, so we, as a church, must wait for God's time to bring in this reign of peace, wholeness, and justice. We may feel starving for it now. We may want at least to nibble on the half-formed grain now. Yet, the parable calls us to wait and be patient. We wait, but we do not wait possibly. We plan our seeds. We do and continue our ministry with your new pastor. Ellie will be going to Southern California with the, her new ministries. 
We feed everyone with our love and care. I know Colfax, UMC, always does that from the beginning. And we build our homeless shelters when we stand together. And we speak our words of peace into the wind of violence and hate, for now we see only a tiny stalk that has popped up from the ground. We see the building crops that we cannot enjoy yet, but the harvest has to arrive and come in God's time. We cannot bring the crop to maturity on our own, but we cannot start with but we cannot start the harvest until the crop is ready. Yet we trust that God will use our efforts and our ministry together in the final gathering. And we take heart that the harvest will come. Nothing can stop God's will for peace, wholeness, and justice in our seeds of ministry here. You start from here. We'll bear fruit. Let us do our ministry in hope and trust. Let us look for the sprouting of the kingdom in this place. And lastly, at the end of this month, he said, Pastor's early journey with you and your, as your pastor will end, but still remain as your friend. You will remain in her thoughts and prayer the memories of your time together with her, with us, is always as our journey continues. Your journey will continue with your new pastor, with his family. And we're confident, Ellie, Pastor Ellie is confident that, she, that your new pastor will experience your faith and your love and support that are formed that will reflect in the glorious future that God has for everyone here at Colfax, at that flood, at Medovisa, and in behalf of Pastor Ellie, she will treasure the beautiful memories, laughter, the tears, your friendship and fellowship, warmness of your hearts. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. God bless us all. Amen. 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 Join us in the closing hymn. <clears throat> God will take care of you. Page 130. In your hymnals. <clears throat> Stretch out your hands and your arms for our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Blessed be. that uh, Ellie prepared for us, brothers and sisters, go forth and choose life. Walk in the ways of Christ. Be strengthened by the Holy Spirit 
that the world might know the love and peace of God. Go in peace, hope, and peace again. Amen. Amen. We are more.